uh, this Matt Chapman go here. Now, while Chapman's a third baseman, the point Harold made is it now locks in Vladimir Guerrero at first base. I doubt that the Blue Jays want to make Vladimir Guerrero at his age and his ability a full-time DH. So you now assume they are also out of the Freeman sweepstakes. And just, you know, keep in mind, tomorrow, Thursday, we're three weeks from opening day. And while hitters take less time to get ready for a season than pitchers, we have a lot of really talented free agent position players out there. And it still remains headlined by Freddie Freeman and Carlos Correa. Yeah, no, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. That was where I was headed with that pretty much puts Freddie Freeman out of that spot. Um, Rizzo, let's go back on that. How did that happen with the Yankees? And uh, is it the timing again, like we saw with Atlanta, where they went ahead and got their guy in Olsen? Yeah, I, look, I think the Yankees were in on Olsen, uh, and the Yankees felt that uh, the Braves were laser-focused on Olsen, and the A's like their package a lot more. Uh, they were in on Freeman. Uh, the Yankees, I think, are going to become the first team ever to be called cheap with a $255 million payroll, but that is a high number in Hal Steinbrenner's world, and it would have been probably a lot higher. It would have definitely been a lot higher if they went and did Freeman. They were comfortable with Rizzo. He was with the team last year and he continues to turn the team in a way they want to turn. They wanted to become more left-handed. They had been too right-handed the last few years. They want to be better defensively and the moves they made over the weekend with uh, Rodfit and uh, Kaina Falefa and Donaldson even at third base makes them better defensively. And I know the instant reaction is going to be Rizzo at first, Labor Torres at second, kind of Falefer at short, and Donaldson at third. Where does this put DJ LeMayu, who was their best player in 19 and 20? Well, remember, DJ LeMayu was originally signed after the 18th season to get 500 plate appearances and move around. And I would suspect he will get 500 plate appearances and move around. There will be days where they don't want Rizzo to play against the lefty at first. There will be days where Glaber Torres shifts over to shortstop uh, for kind of Falefa probably once or twice a week. And I think that uh, there'll be moments where he plays third base. Josh Donaldson, if he plays 100 games at third base, would be a lot. Uh, where does that leave, one follow-up with the Yankees here, where does that leave Luke Voigt, who finds his name being bandied about in trade talks now? Uh, he would seem to be perhaps kind of an odd man out, but a guy that's in the prime of his career expressed last year that he wanted to play every day despite the addition of Anthony Rizzo. If he's going to be moved, are there potential suitors already being discussed? Yeah, I think that he is not a Yankee on opening day, which mm. is April 7th. Uh, I think he'll probably have to play spring training games. He had a meniscus issue last year. I've heard he showed up in great shape. Of course, we say that about everybody's in the best shape of their life at this time of year. But uh, I've heard he's in good shape. I think he'll play games. And I think teams that miss out on uh, the DH spot. And remember, there's now 30 DH spots. Uh, with the National League, with the DH becoming universal. I think the Yankees will try to put him in a place where, you know, we saw Nelson Cruz go to Washington at some point. Jorge Soler will go someplace. Schwarber will go someplace. But in the game of musical chairs, somebody will miss out on it. And it got lost a little bit last year because he was injured. But Luke Voigt was, is a good hitter in the major leagues. He was for the Yankees. Uh, and I think somebody will try to buy low and see if they could get the 2019-20 version of Luke Boyd. Remember, he led the league in homers in the shortened season in 20. All right, before Matt wraps this whole section up with you, before you come back again, Joel, I want to put a period on Freddie Freeman. So here's what I got. Are the Yankees gone all the way out? That's one question. You got the Jays out. I've heard Red Sox, Dodgers, and then I saw a headline today, the Padres. So where are we with Freddie Freeman as we sit here today, this morning? 
Yeah, you know, Harold, whenever I see a team, I, I, I wouldn't put anything by the Padres. They showed us their aggressiveness last year, but they have a pretty high payroll for their marketplace right now. You always wonder, are they in it to try to juice up the Dodgers? I think it's the preferable landing place for Freddie Freeman. He's from there. He lives there in the offseason. It's a big market team that he knows will be in contention every year. I mean, he, he was a champion last year. I'm sure he doesn't want to go to a place where he's not pretty much sure of contention. The question, this has been the question throughout, which is the Braves were willing to offer a five-year contract, I believe, in about the $140 million range. Freeman believes he deserved six years and closer to $30 million, if not over that. And so now the question is, where above five years at $140 million? Does he get the sixth year? Does he get closer to $30 million a year? Can they get the Dodgers there? This is Freddie Freeman. He's going to get a very, very good contract. The question is, does he get the great contract he has been seeking in this marketplace as some suitors fall out? Time's ticking. Uh, opening day about three weeks away. Coming up, as you mentioned, on April 7th. And Freddie Freeman is among the uh, high-profile players still not in uniform for the upcoming season. Joel Sherman with us on a Wednesday. More from Joel about an hour from now. Joel, thanks. Uh, so, Freeman, Correa, Schwarber, only a few of the highlights of a uh, pretty distinguished list of still free Got an all-star team out there. Yeah. And it got me to thinking. I was talking with a couple friends of mine yesterday, and I said, hey, let's put together an all-star team. So here's kind of a look at the all-star team. you got Freddie Freeman at first, Jed Lowry, who's been an all-star at second, Correa and Trevor Story at short. you got Chris Bryant, Swerver, Conforto, Soler, Castellanos. I, I'm telling you what. Uh, they might be a midsummer classic. It's a, to that's, take that's on a 94 folks. win team, right? There. Oh, it's just a really special team. And <laughs> these are the guys that can do it. Look, Freddie Freeman is, is a game changer. Jed Lowry's healthy once again. Chris Bryant in talks with all over the league. Correa, will he go back to Houston? Who knows? Trevor Story's out there. Swover, man, with the DH now, opens up 15 spots for him. Conforto's got to come back. Solaire, home run in the World Series. Oh, World Series. And MVP. then this guy might be the best hitter of the whole group. And that's Castellanos. That's an impressive group. It's gonna, it's gotta be fixed. It's gotta be like finished by this week, don't you? Like th- I really thought that we'd know where Freeman was gonna be before today. Well, I really did. And by the end of the week, then you're, then you're getting late in the game. You gotta get yeah. him into camp, man. But, but what you're looking at though is you and I are looking at right now. This is a long-term contract, so it may not be. I gotta be ready by opening day. Every player wants to be. But if you're advising them, you're saying, look, we're looking long term here. You may struggle out the gate, but you're going to get time to get right. But this is a long term contract you're looking at. Do you think anybody on that list and there are other players, too, though, that's just the cream of the crop. Do you think anybody on that list is still on the market after opening day? Like we've yeah. seen that in in non work stoppage springs. I where, can see that happening. I mean, that no would doubt. it would be pretty amazing if somebody like Correa or Story or anybody in this group, for that matter, were to be out there on the sidelines still on April seventh. I, I can see that happening. I can see that uh, with yeah, about two or three guys out there. Um, what could happen? Maybe four guys. I mean, we've, we've been speculating on good fits for this group uh, ever since we came back on the air when the lockout ended. And here we are doing it still on this Wednesday as we're three weeks away from opening day. Pretty interesting and stuff. And I know you got Castellanos on there as a DH, but he can play different places if he needs to as well. Yeah, so yeah for sure. Uh, for sure. But that's just, there's still 200 guys out there. Yeah. 200 free agents that are sitting out there. Not everybody's going to be ready to go in in a week. And not everybody's going to get a huge deal. And not everybody's going to get a job. Right. All right. I also need a job.